Pope of Rome, is it the Antichrist that the Bible has been talking about for 2,000 years? History, Features, Symbols and Facts Antichrist, the polar opposite and the supreme enemy of Christ. According to Christian tradition, he will reign terribly in the period before the Last Judgment. The Antichrist first appeared in the Epistles of St. John. And the fully developed story of the life and reign of the Antichrist is found in medieval texts. As it has been applied to various individuals and institutions for nearly two millennia. The Antichrist and the forerunner of the Antichrist have been and remain the terms of the most intense disgrace. The Christian conception of the Antichrist was derived primarily from the Jewish traditions. The Book of Daniel in the Hebrew Bible, written around 167 BC, comma, foretold the coming of a last persecutor who would speak great words against the Most High, and wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Scholars agree that the author of Daniel alluded to the contemporary Hellenistic ruler of Palestine, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, who tried to eradicate Judaism. But because Antiochus was not named, later readers could apply Daniel's prediction to any persecutor. The early Christians applied it especially to the Roman emperors who persecuted the church. One of them being Emperor Nero. The four books of the New Testament that fueled the Christian faith in the Antichrist were the first two epistles of John, Revelation of John, and Paul's second epistle to the Thessalonians. The first three of these were written near the end of the first century. The latter was written either by the Apostle Paul shortly after 50 CE or by one of Paul's disciples about 20 or 30 years later. Neither Thessalonians 2 nor Revelation use the term Antichrist but both are referring to a follower who will obviously be the same person. The first epistle of John introduces an important distinction between the coming Antichrist and many Antichrists who are already active in the world. This distinction not only allowed believers to denigrate contemporaries as Antichrists without having to label a single individual as Antichrist, but also allowed them to identify the body of Antichrist as a community existing at present, but destined to have its day of triumph in the future. The triumphant reign of the Antichrist, never clearly distinguished from the beginning of his ministry, will last three and a half years. Like Christ, the Antichrist will come to Jerusalem, but, like the opposite of Christ, he will be greeted with enthusiasm and revered by the Jews. During his reign, he will rebuild the temple and sit on Solomon's throne in a sacred and hideous reversal of priestly justice and righteous rule. He will convert the rulers of the earth to his cause and persecute Christians with horror. All who oppose his deception will be tortured, and as Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter 24 verse 21, there will be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. The two great prophets Enoch and Elijah, who never died but were driven away to earthly paradise, will end up preaching against the tyrant and comforting the elect, but the Antichrist will kill them. However, at the end of the three and a half years allotted, the Antichrist will be destroyed by the power of Christ. So the Bible says, 1. The Antichrist has existed since the first century AD. Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming, and now many Antichrists have appeared. From here we know it's the last hour, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. 2. The Antichrist will still be here when Jesus Christ returns to earth, and then shall that lawless man appear, whom the Lord shall slay with the breath of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Therefore, the Antichrist cannot be one person, as he has been here for at least 2,000 years. It can thus be an institution or an authority. Also, according to the Bible, the Antichrist will not occupy a temple in Jerusalem, but a place that may initially seem to be the body of Christ, let him sit in the temple of God, pretending to be a God. There is only one way in which these prophecies can be fulfilled. And the Pope is the only one through whom all these biblical prophecies can be fulfilled. And as Jesus Christ is the only one who fulfilled the prophecy of the coming of the Messiah, so the Pope is the only possibility in being the Antichrist. 
Roman Catholics see the Pope as the Vicar of Christ, that is, a substitute. In Latin, the Pope's name is Vicarius Fili Dei, meaning substitute for the Son of God. In Greek, Antichrist means in the place of Christ. So, by definition, the Pope is the Antichrist. On the other hand, Pope means Father. But Father is a word forbidden by Jesus Christ. And call not your Father earthly, for your Father is one, the one in heaven. The Pope is the Antichrist, a history from the 16th century. But is the idea that the Pope is the Antichrist new? No, not at all. The idea is at least a few hundred years old. The first to have such an idea was Martin Luther, 1483 to 1546, who rebelled against the Vatican and proved, using the New Testament, that the reign of Antichrist, foretold and described in the Bible, was the papacy. Here is what Luther said on August 18, 1520. We are convinced that the papacy is the seat of the true Antichrist. John Calvin, 1509 to 1564, another important reformer of Christianity, was of the opinion that the Vatican is the seat of the Antichrist, as he found in his work The Institutions of the Christian Religion. We call the Roman Pontiff Antichrist. But those who have this opinion do not realize that they are bringing the same accusation against the Apostle Paul, whose second epistle to the Thessalonians cannot be capable of any other interpretation than that which applies to the papacy. John Knox, 1505-1572, another Christian reformer, also believes that the Pope is the Antichrist, the son of perdition of which the Apostle Paul speaks. The Anglican Thomas Cranmer, 1489-1556, has the same opinion. Who in his works believes that Rome is the seat of the Antichrist and the Pope is the Antichrist himself? And I can prove it with other scriptures, other ancient writings and strong motives. Roger Williams, 1603-1683, the first Baptist pastor in the United States, speaks of the Pope as the alleged vicar of Christ on earth, standing as God above the temple of God, glorifying himself to be above what is called God, above the conscience and souls of his vassals, above the Spirit of Christ, above the Holy Spirit and above God. But he is nothing but the son of the loss of the second epistle to the Thessalonians of the Holy Apostle Paul. The Westminster Confession of Faith of 1647, the Westminster Confession of Faith, the basic confession of Calvinism says the following. There is no other head of the church than the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, neither can the Pope of Rome be the head of the church, but the Antichrist, the man of sins and the son of perdition, who glorifies himself against Christ and against what is God. John Napier, 1550-1617, a great Scottish mathematician devoted to Protestants, wrote of the Apocalypse of John. John refers to one and the same number and refers to the fact that the Church of Christ fled into the wilderness and the whore, who appears in the Apocalypse is Babylon. Does not actually represent Babylon, but Rome. There is the apostate kingdom, where the Antichrist reigns, and whom Saint Paul calls the man of all sins. The beast began his kingdom in 1077. With Pope Gregory VII, speaking of the papacy, Methodist theologian John Wesley, 1703 to 1791, states, He is the man of sin, because he exalts sin beyond measure. He is also the son of perdition, because he caused the death of many people, both opponents and supporters. In his monumental book Explanatory Notes on the Bible, Wesley explains at length why the papacy is the Antichrist. In this analysis, Wesley starts with Revelation after John, verse 13 to 1, And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having ten heads and seven horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads. Blasphemy. Wesley believes that this beast is nothing but the papacy of Rome which is opposed to the kingdom of Christ. And the papacy is not a spiritual or ecclesiastical power, but a secular one. Wesley believes that the beast of the Bible appeared in 1073 when Pope Gregory VII came to power. Gregory VII is the one who established the omnipotence of the papacy in 1077. By the following doctrines, only the Pope of Rome can appoint and dismiss bishops, only the Pope can make new laws for the Church, 
All princes must kiss the Pope's feet. Only the name of the Pope should be recited in churches. The Pope's name is the only one written in paradise. The Pope can dethrone emperors. No book can be canonical without the Pope's consent. No one on earth can overturn a sentence except the Pope. The Pope cannot be the subject of human judgment. The characteristics of the beast in the Bible. If we combine the words of Revelation, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having ten heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, and the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and its feet were like those of a bear, and its mouth like the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And one of the beasts was slain with the sword, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the earth wondered after the beast. With the apocalypse, and said unto me, peoples and nations and nations and tongues. And Daniel, these four beasts are four kings. And the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom, and shall possess it for ever and ever. After this I asked him to tell me the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and which was out of the way frightening with iron teeth and brass claws and which ate, crushed, and what was left step on his feet. And of the ten horns that were on his head, and of the other which went up, and before which the three fell. And had eyes and mouth, which spake great things, and magnified above the others. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Until the old man came and did justice to the saints of the Most High, until the time was fulfilled and the kingdom came under the rule of the saints. He replied, The fourth beast means that a fourth king will be on earth, who will be different from all the other kingdoms, who will eat the whole earth, trample on it and crush it. Then we could say that the beast, Antichrist has the following characteristics. 1. Has global influence. 2. It is a religious power. 3 appears from Western Europe, 4. He has a man at his head, 5. Speak blasphemies, 6. Appears after the fall of Rome, 476 AD, 7. He plundered three kingdoms, 8. Persecutes God's saints. Don't all these features remind you of the papacy? Since the kingdom of the Antichrist lasts 1,260 years, according to some theologians, and considering that the beginning of the reign of the Antichrist would be 1077, could we consider that the end of the world would occur in the year 1077 plus 1260 smiley face, 2,337? If you liked our documentary, don't forget to leave a comment, like and subscribe. Until next time. I wish you a wonderful day with us.